Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having an unbelievable weekend. A little overcast here in Houston, but uh, blessed to be alive, blessed to be still moving towards the things that uh, I'm passionate about. And I'm here because one of my clients who also happens to be a friend and supporter of the work I do in the inner city uh, requested that I address this and I'm doing a little bit more of that issues and things that I think are in some way related to the black community and have teachable moments and things that we can take from them and glean from them uh, I am going to feel those requests uh, I did one uh, requested earlier this week on domestic violence I'm going to do this one which is about John Snyder who used to play uh, Bo Duke on the Dukes of Hazard. if you are old enough to have grown up in the 70s it was probably one of the most uh, popular shows of uh, during that time and he was one of the stars on that show he uh, parlayed out of that into country music had a few number ones back in the early uh, to mid 80s um, and he has in recent years moved heavily off into addressing issues from a political perspective and doing interviews and uh, using his platform to push conservative views and we have to be very careful when we talk about politics and conservatism versus liberalism and what the undertone and the undercurrent is many times that those terms are used and are not used in their true meaning and true sense but to represent some other things and we're going to get into all of that it's not going to be a long one but it's going to be interesting and fun and i'm going to get get to the point as quickly as i possibly can remember if you like what you see here or encounter on this channel hit the like button hit the share button and subscribe if you are aware of the work we do in the community, all the things we do from our rite of passage program for young black boys, for our work we do with battered women, uh, victims of childhood sexual abuse, domestic violence, mental health programs, we our uh, huge and rapidly growing research center uh, where we address all of the enigmatic issues that plague the black community. If you believe in the work we've done for over 30 years, uh, through my leadership look in the description box and give so let's talk and those of you who follow me understand that I don't do celebrity gossip so this isn't about the gossip edge of this so it's not going to be a whole lot of uh, tea poured here what we're going to do is we're going to break down what's being done and why it should matter or should not matter to us and um what's going on in the music industry and how does it how is the music industry simply a microcosm of everything else that we deal with in this country and so much more but anyway for those who don't know uh beyonce has released two singles from an upcoming country album uh which is to be released in march the two songs that have been released i know one of them is texas hold'em and I think another one is 16 Carriages or something like that uh, are the two songs that have been released already and are in rotation. Well, what happened is uh, some radio station in Oklahoma, small town Oklahoma uh, station, uh, had a listener call in and request to hear Texas Hold'em. And they told them they weren't playing that at that station and you know they were pretty adamant about not playing it and it was obvious that they were not playing it because beyonce was the artist now those of you who know me uh know me i mean really know me not just what you see on social media you knows uh my awareness of beyonce is quite complex and so i see things differently I am not a part of the Beehive, but I am a huge fan of her work ethic, her presentation, um, her catalog, uh, but I, I'm not a radical on pretty much anything that doesn't uh, involve things that I can do to make change. Uh, there are artists I love, there are artists that 
I don't love and everything else in between, but I'm not fanatic or radical about any of it. Some I really, really love. Uh, but you know, you know, it's not like I'm going to war for B. Number one is B is an extremely wealthy woman with an extremely wealthy husband with access to a lot of things that I don't have access to, to stand up for herself. And she has, based on what I saw at the Grammys, well, I didn't see it at the Grammys. I saw the clip from it because I didn't watch the Grammys. But based on what I saw, what happened at the Grammys, he's willing to stand up and defend her. So this isn't about defending her, but this is about defending us and some of the things she represents in her blackness. Uh, so basically, after the DJ refused to play Texas Hold'em, the Beehive showed up. And if you ain't never ran into a problem with the Beehive, they show up. <clears throat> I got to say, man, I don't know anybody with fans like this. Taylor Swift's got a huge fan following, but the Beehive rides. And they showed up, and by the time it was said and done, the station had issued an apology. The station put the song in rotation. They showed where it would be play played and what time it would be played in that rotation. And it made a lot of people unhappy. Here's why John Schneider came out and said what he said. Now, what's been going what's going around is that John Schneider came out and basically made the analogy that Beyonce is like a dog running around marking her territory. What he actually said was con liberals are invading everything that conservatives have. They now they've literally turned this into a mu the music thing into a politics thing, but it's not really politics. So when he says that liberals are in the lefties, as he put it, the lefties, and I think we need to be careful about that too. Uh, Tony Lindsay uh, got on me about that other day. Using liberal and lefty in in uh, synonymously may not be a good thing. But anyway, he said lefties. So we're talking about extreme left versus extreme right. So we're not just simply talking conservative is conservatism and liberalism. We're talking right and left wing. And he said the lefties go around marking their territory like dogs. And it was in the conversation of Beyonce. He didn't specifically say her. He said lefties. And but she's the one in the conversation. So it's implicit that he is referring to her and that he is using a dog analogy of marking territory, peeing on trees is as he puts it. And it got it got people in an uproar and people have started to respond. And here's the thing. When he says lefties taking everything that we conservatives have, he's saying blacks coming into country music and that they are trying to lay claim to country music. And anyone who doesn't understand the origins of the genres may easily buy into it, especially if you're young and you haven't seen that. Uh, a lot of people started with those roots. And Beyonce is a black woman from the state of Texas. And this isn't her first country uh, track that she's dropping. It's not the first time she stepped into that genre. The thing is, life is shrinking for a lot of people who want to call themselves conservatives. And let me be very clear here. I'm not dim or republic. I'm not right or left wing. This country, right and left wing, belong to the same bird. And that bird's been shitting on black people from day one. The first thing we're going to have to learn is whether it's Trump or Biden, we don't win. It's just a different way of presenting it, different people moving in different directions. But at the end of the day, we get stepped on. That's been the end result. No matter who's done it, we just like it better when Dems do it because they talk softer to us. They point out all the rape, racist stuff that the other ones do while they hide their hand and screwing the hell out of us all the time. And if we don't ever recognize that, they're going to keep throwing Trump up and we're going to keep going, oh, my God, hating him while they sit up and stick it to us but that's me on my diatribe let me get back and and and, and digress here look my, uh when 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 my client i'm just gonna say phyllis uh when phyllis reached out phyllis had some things she said 
they infiltrate our culture, but we're not allowed to infiltrate their culture. Uh, radio stations refusing to play her music and the bash, uh, until they got the backlash. And they say, she said, you don't regularly see us, if ever, present as presenters and special guests on country music award shows. Um, for the most part, you know, we've got some some staples. K. Michelle has moved off in the country. Darius Rucker is Dar Darius Rucker, uh, who used to be the lead singer for, for singer for the Hootie and the Bl Blowfish, has been doing it for one of my favorite songs right now. Uh, is is a remix with him in it called "To Be a Man" with Dax, uh, and he's doing it. But I mean, I go all the way back as a kid, and we had Charlie Pride. So that was a black person in country that we can relate to who was a star in country music. But we have to go back to the origins. If you look at some of the instruments that are inextricably connected to uh, country music, primarily the banjo, there's origins in Africa that come from that. And th those instruments were brought in early in the early stages of the development of certain genres. And so we are, whether they want to or not, we are rooted in so many different things and to sit up and say that we are trying to invade or infiltrate their genre you know and the crazy thing is while simultaneously uh deriding beyonce for moving off into country he said it was different when shonaya twain did it the opposite when she left country and went into other genres like pop and rock uh, it was okay. So in other words, it's the same old narrative of we get to do whatever we want to and we get to take from you, benefit from you, benefit from your genius, your gifting, your expertise, jump off in the lanes that you create and claim them as our own. But the moment you come off into something that we think we have a right to, we will resist. We will talk. We will. And the crazy thing is the ignorance that that underwrites that type of behavior not to understand how these genres came into place and music as as a language is universal first and foremost and we are a universal people in the sense that it originates with us. there's a reason and it's going to upset some people and tick some people off but there's a reason if we're talking spiritual rhythm we're talking about universal rhythm we're talking about the rhythm of the universe we're talking about how things move we're talking about the pineal gland we're talking about a bunch of things to even get to what we hear in audible music we're talking about a rhythm a rhythm of spirituality the rhythm of emotion the rhythm of energy the rhythm all these rhythms create patterns and out of these patterns there comes a vibrational energy that ultimately translates into what we call music but it starts with rhythm. Have you ever wondered why, as a general rule, there are always exceptions. We are born with rhythm naturally. We And even when you can take a person who doesn't look like us and teach them rhythm by count, meaning you put them on count, you put them on what we call put them on beat, and they can get on beat and they can do the step. The movements aren't the same. The flow isn't the same. It isn't as natural. And you can get a baby barely out and they'll bop into the music. And it's rhythm that it's not saying that it can't happen and it doesn't happen with other genres. It does. And but what you will find is the I mean, the ethnicities and groups that it happens to more frequently are more closely still related to African roots. So you're talking about Afro Latinos. <laughs> other indigenous places around the world there's a natural rhythm but when you come down to the purest of it when you talk about us as a race we are normally naturally born with rhythm not everybody some of y'all two left feet no toes but for 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 general generally speaking it's there and it's there for a reason 
that's because we're most nat we're more naturally attuned to the entire universe and the rhythms and patterns that are given. That's why things flow freely from us when we're in that particular state. That's why any genre we get into, we can hold our own because it all comes back to us. Now, I could go on and on on a lesson on that stuff, but that's not why, why I'm here is to talk about why do they get to do that and we end up with, well, number one is we need to start and fight. And that's what I personally believe, and this is me, and of course, you know, you start talking like this, you get labeled a conspiracy theorist. I think being labeled at this time and point in our history as a country and just being in this world, being labeled as a conspiracy theorist is one of the greatest compliments you can give a person because it means that they're not buying into the, 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 the normal narrative. They are not sitting up and accepting things as is they are not willing to be locked into a box of status quo. Um, you know, I don't go out of my way to go looking for far fit, but I do believe that both Prince and Michael uh, fighting major record labels for the ownership of their masters and the freedom to control and own their music had something to do with their deaths. Did they both have issues with addiction to painkillers? Absolutely. But they had been doing this, for managing this for years. And I think, you know, one thing, you know, most people who overdose on drugs generally do it early in the game. People that's been doing it for a while know what to do and what not to do. I'm not saying that it is or isn't, but I'm saying that I think that. But the one thing that they fought for and the thing they pushed for and the thing that they pressed was the importance. Michael gave lectures. Prince did the same thing. It's important to own your stuff. One of the things that we don't do enough of is ownership. We'll build something great and then we'll sell it. We'll build something great and then we'll auction it off. We'll give it off because in our mindset, the dollar amount in our bank account has more value when the truth of the matter is we're, we're still seeing billions flow from the uh, catalog of the Beatles. And Mike's catalog is now out there. And, and, and it's money because that's how you hold value. Not in cash, but in things that appreciate over time. And catalogs and 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 copyrights and so many things that we should be owning and patents things we should be owning we're not owning and what's happening is they're jumping in and taking it what and when you do something like you move off into a journal where they feel like they got a little space and it's just them. like the thing is they'll sit up when it's convenient and talk about this post-racial america and 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 and, and, and someone who uh is is not willing or unwilling or unable to look beneath the surface to really examine the constructs and the machinations and all of the different components of life at play might sit up and say, yeah, man, you can do this over here now. You can do that over here. You can go here and eat and you can hang out here and, and everything like everybody's and, and, and what you don't see beneath the surface is who's pulling the strings, who's controlling the narrative, who's sitting up and determining what you're upset about, the media control. And see, that's what he's actually upset about. He's upset about the media element and component of music. He, he mentions it, but nobody picks up on it. He keeps saying conservative media. What does he mean? He wants to be able to control the narrative because in controlling the narrative, I control outcomes. But the more and more we move into spaces, we, we have the platform to create narratives through our music. Musics are powerful mediums, and we have been misusing music. music. We haven't been holding our own artists accountable for the type of music and the type of content in their music that they're putting forth. And, 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 and what, what, what we're seeing is a side or a group doing what we should have done with hip hop. What they are doing, what they are attempting to do with country by guarding who comes in and who creates content and what they are able to do in that genre, we should have done with hip hop. We should be doing with R and B. We should be very careful. I'm, the, you know, I'm a fan of Eminem. I don't believe he's anywhere close to being the goat, but dude is nice. And to me, he doesn't get as deep into this as he does. 
if one of the greats doesn't co-sign and stamp him. Dr. Dre brought him in. Okay, because there are others that I've heard that are nice that didn't get that kind of play. And I'm not trying to shit on dude. I'm also not kissing his ass. He is not my my number one. He's not my number one. But I'm not like some people saying he just people think he nice because he white. No, dude, nice. He he he's nice, you know. Uh, but at the same time, he had to come through something and he had to come in. And that's a certain thing he has to be held accountable for in the standard to. You don't see him pushing white agendas in hip hop. I see more black hip hop artists pushing white agendas than I see him. Because he's being watched. He's been, well, that's the thing we should be doing more often, though. But we should be doing it with our own because the blacks who are pushing white agendas aren't pushing them on their own. They're pushing them because of white uh, record, uh, record label executives. And so when they are sitting up and they're talking about that, it's about ownership. Bottom line. Stop giving away what's ours. Stop sitting up and trying to share. Stop sitting up and trying to belong. Stop figuring you got... if. Quick create, matter of fact, the hell with them. Let them have it. Create our own. But when we create our own, what we've got to do is starve theirs so they don't benefit from ours. See, we can't create our own, then let them come over and get our best to write their music and, 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 and ghost write their lyrics and all that stuff. Then they go back over there and they're still, they're still eating off our genius when we do that. If we're going to sit up and say, okay, since you don't want to let us have it, we're taking all of our talent out of it and we're creating our own type of country and we're going to do our thing over here and we're not writing one damn song for you we're not sitting up and we're not going to write and release any 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 of our music for you to sample we're not going to let you stop sampling james brown damn it i mean no matter what the most sample man in work on the planet in life no matter what genre is james brown and they'll try to act like he, he wasn't that he wasn't all that the most gifted guitarist is black, and it ain't Jimi Hendrix. Of all time, it's black, and it ain't Jimi Hendrix. His name is Prince. Jimi was bad. Prince, another level. We've got so much genius that they want to rifle through, and it's our responsibility to protect it, not by complaining, not by trying to argue them over and convince them to accept us in their genre and play our music on their radio station. I could tell you this right now. If they never play it on any country radio station, the song is going to go number one because the Beehive is going to make sure it goes number one. And it's going to get rotation if we have to listen to it on Magic 102 R&B. That's just how it is. And that's what we need to be doing instead of trying to make people like us, instead of trying to make people accept us, instead of trying to get them to do this. The hell, my whole thing is that's why I never really got into the whole Jay-Z and the Grammys thing. The hell, that's their stuff. They're never going to make you bigger than them. No matter how good you are, no matter how dope you are, no matter how wonderful your music is, they are going to have some way that they put you in your place. For the longest, we couldn't get an Oscar. And then when Denzel did get a leading role uh, Oscar, it was for playing a bad person. All, the, all those Oscar-worthy performances, Malcolm X, More Better Blues, John Q, Man on Fire, all those different movies that, he, that were Oscar-worthy, and they waited till he played Lorenzo on training day uh, to give him that to give him that Oscar, but he got it. And then some doors opened, and Jamie came, and and then Monique got some uh, best supporting actress, which it had been a while. But all these different things. But again, stop. You don't need their stuff for us to know you're great. If we're, we 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 riding with you, but we need to start doing. Then we had BET. The BET Awards, we had BET. 
But Bob Johnson, more money in the bank account, getting unloading, sold it. Now it's owned by Viacom or whoever bought it from Viacom, but it's owned by white people. Tyler Perry tried to buy it back from what I understand, and that didn't go through. Now, that's what I heard. I couldn't verify it, and I don't want to sit up and put my stamp and say it absolutely happened, but it was, from what I heard, his attempt was to buy it, and they told him no. So, again, we had it. And we had BET Awards. We had the BET Hip Hop Awards. We had BET. We had, and, and what we'll do is, the, what we need to do is they, the same way we did with gospel music. They wouldn't put us in, so we went out and created the Stella Awards. And we celebrate that. We, we just need to learn how to do our own thing. We need to stop trying to make them accept us. Stop trying to make them uh, want us to be around. We need to start loving ourselves enough to be okay with us. That's my take on it. Look, I hope it made sense, uh, but I had to touch on it because I promised her I would. Phyllis, I hope that hit on it the way you wanted to, but at the end of the day, it's about ownership and control, not about being accepted, not about fitting in, not about being liked. On that note, I'm out of here. As I said at the beginning, if you believe in what I'm doing here, look in the description box and see how to give and support the work we do. On that note, I'm out of here. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.